What makes a great ball striker? Well, there are three things. One, they hit the ground in the same spot every time. They get that really crispy feeling on the club face. Two, they're able to control the curve of the ball so they hit their target almost every single time. And three, they've got plenty of power to play the golf course well. Now, when you think of a great ball strike, you probably think of Jack Nicholas, Ben Hogan, Sam Snead, Tiger Woods. You probably think of a PGA Tour player. So a lot of golfers on YouTube, and you're here looking up golf tips, they think, well, I can't get tour quality ball striking. That's just impossible. I don't have enough time to practice like those guys and gals. I just want to hit the ball good, but I don't think I can get that kind of level of ball striking. And I'm here to prove to you that you can actually get tour quality ball striking without working so hard. You don't have to quit your day job to get tour quality ball striking. And that's the beauty of a really simplified technique. And as a great songwriter, Ronnie Van Zant put it, give me three steps. I'm gonna give you three steps to have great ball striking. So we want crispy KFC, crispy ball strike on the center of the club face every single time. Well, the first thing we need to do to have crispy ball striking is determine how to get this club to come into the ground the same spot every time. If your club's not coming in the ground the same spot every time, you're going to be inconsistent. So what do I do if I want to be a great ball striker and have the club come into the ground the same spot every time? I do one really simple thing. I just make sure that I keep my head in place throughout the golf swing and I favor a little bit of weight on my front side. So when I swing with weight on the front side, this allows the club to return to that same spot every time. You're not seeing a whole lot of shifting, hula hooping off the ball, hula dancing off the ball, or swaying. So the sway, what happens? Oh, I'm off the ball. Now where am I gonna hit? I don't know. Back here, ooh. Maybe scoop a little bit. If I'm lucky, I'll hit the ball. Most of the time, you're lucky. I don't want it to rely on luck. So the first thing all great ball strikers do is they stay centered. They keep their weight on the front side. There's no big shift off of the ball. Let's look at some players here. This is players from today, players from yesterday, great ball strikers. And it's no coincidence that they all do this because they have to do it. If you're timing your golf swing with a shift or a sway, a lateral move, good luck to you. I've been there, done that. I used to do the old way of swinging where you got to shift back and forth, but all that led to was more frustration. Tens of thousands of balls and more frustration. And you know, one good day and like 10 bad days. But then when I switched to getting centered over the ball, crispy contact happened really frequently. I didn't have to think about it. It just starts happening because I'm staying centered over the ball. Then you see these beautiful divots in front of the ball and you say, wow, I barely tried and yet I'm taking divots in front of the ball. I look like a tour player. I'm not even, I'm not even practicing, but like 30 balls once a week? No way. So easy, so effortless, so powerful. Okay, that brings us to the second thing, being able to really crisp up your shots, start controlling your ball flight a lot better. One of the things all great ball strikers also do is they get their shoulders to turn down at the top of the backswing. Why do they do that? Well, they tilt their shoulder down so that their body can keep a relationship to the golf ball. If I don't have a relationship with the ball, and you'll see it better from this angle, if I don't have a, a relationship, this will be a relationship, this is no relationship, I won't be able to hit a golf ball unless I do some fancy moves like dropping and chopping the club. But that's all luck. If I don't have a relationship, I have to figure out how to hit this ball with my hands and arms. And that's a variable. So talking about eliminating variables for good golf, we can't have those kinds of variables. So one way you can make this really simple is we start learning how to keep our bodies tilt to the ground in the golf swing. So as, as the great players swing back, we see this tilt. So let's look at some photos here of great players, great ball strikers, all tilting. You see the tilt at a 45 degree angle, by the way, because on the face on view, you see this, but from the 45 degree angle, you see tilt. So they all tilt their lead shoulder down, left shoulder for the right hand player. This keeps the relationship to the ground. It also helps you hit your target better because it keeps the club face from doing a whole lot of rotating. 
So if you just kept this really square in the swing, we'll talk about this at a future time, you would hit your target every single time just starting off from a position where you've got your club face square to address, you just tilt down and you return the club to impact, you're back to square. So there's none of this lose my relationship, try and figure out, roll my hands, do it working way too hard. That brings us into point number three. How do we get plenty of power to play the golf course without working so hard? So how do we get effortless power? How do we swing easier, hit farther like the pros? You know the pros look like, oh, I just swing so light and fluffy and the ball goes 320 yards. Yeah, you can do that similar effect with your swing when you do this one thing that all great ball strikers do. All great ball strikers have inward movement of the hands to the top of the backswing to varying degrees. So the hands moving in is a characteristic of great ball striking. So you think of like Ben Hogan would have probably the most hands in you'd see of a legendary ball striker, really getting those hands into the right shoulder area, behind the shoulder. And then you also think of a player like Justin Thomas. He's got a little bit more of this upright swing, but the hands are still in. You see, anything in is inside of this line. So the hands are in. It's never really straight back and up. That's an impossibility to play good golf from there. I look like an elephant trying to swing a trunk around. So we all have this inward movement. Great ball strikers take the hands in to varying degrees. You'll have the most power potential when you can maximize the amount of hands in. It's like a football kicker. They all kick from the side now. They never kick straight on. So they can hit the ball from an angle from in here to the ball. That enables them to get more power because the distance to the ball from here to here is a lot greater than the distance from a straight line here to here. So this is more distance you gotta cover in a short period of time. More power, less effort. That's what that means for you. So you need to learn how to get the hands moving in. Check out these players here. It's a great spectrum of golfers who move the hands in. You'll find, again, with best ball strikers, they all move their hands in to varying degrees. And it's really just a category of what makes a great ball striker? These three things, the weight forward, the shoulder down, the hands in. Those are three steps. Just like Ronnie Van Zandt said, give me three steps. Well, I'm giving you three steps to the door that will unlock the best ball striking of your life. Now, an easy way to get into this, I've got a free ball striking course. The top three keys, you need to be a great ball striker. That shows you in more detail how to do these three awesome moves. Check it out in the link and comments below, go.segudo.golf. I often get the question, does this apply with the big dog, the d driver? I hear some people say, Tom, you gotta make a different swing with your driver than you do with your irons, right? And they say, well, I've got a swing for my wedges, I got a swing for my short irons, I got a swing for my long irons, I got a swing for my woods, and then I got a swing for my driver. And sometimes I hear that line, oh yeah, my instructor told me never hit the driver because I'm not consistent enough. He told me to hit the three wood. It's the same swing, it all works when you do it. With the driver, all these players still do the same moves that we're talking about. Why? Because you need to do them for great contact. With the driver, they're still weight forward. Even if the ball is more forward, no matter what their setup is, whether it looks like this, or this, or this, what happens is the head's in place. And so you have to have a degree of weight staying left on the front side to keep the head in place. A big shift in a sway, that's a weight shift. It's not gonna work. This is what you're going to see more of because the head can't move. Why do you want to invite that kind of inconsistency into your life? Then we go into the shoulder down part. Well, I've got a relationship to the ball. That's here at a dress. I just need to keep it. So if I keep that relationship, I'm gonna hit the center of the club face. 
every single time. It's proven to work. Don't you love how simple this is? Three steps, three simple steps. And then we have the hands in part. Nothing changes. Even a guy like Bubba Watson, who swings the most vertical arms, has his hands inside of the target line. So his hands are still in. Now, I don't like having the arms that high. Personally, I'd rather see them here. Because you can just get right back to the ball. It's so much easier. I don't have to drop the club. All that rerouting is a pain in the tuchus. So, we combine the same thing with the driver. We have a nice setup. We swing with the weight staying forward. The shoulder moving down, the hands moving in. And that's going to allow me to hit the center of the club face of the ball effortlessly. Ball will just explode off the face. Looks something like this. And I'm really not trying too hard. Just to give you an idea, I had a really hard leg day the other day, and I could barely walk, like trying this new workout program. And these concepts, even though I couldn't feel my legs, which I lost about 20 yards because I didn't have my legs, these concepts still enable me to hit the driver 270 effortlessly. So I'm, playing, I'm swimming without legs, and yet I'm still striking it reasonably well. And so that just tells you that these things will work when you do them. Combine these three steps, and you will be a great ball striker. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life right now, Check out my online golf school, Segudo.golf. In it is a complete golf swing training program that will take you from foundation to building a golf swing that has the elements of the greatest ball strikers of all time. You will experience the best ball striking of your life. Life's too short to play bad golf. So get on the track to playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Thanks for tuning in. Have a rockin' week.